I'm Bree from My Abiding Home and I'm so excited to share with you about these loft beds that I made from Anna White Plans on AnnaWhite.com and there are some tips and tricks I want to share with you about things that would have made this probably go a lot quicker. So follow along. Welcome to My Abiding Home. This is a place where I share encouragement and discipleship, natural living, wholesome food, family life, and some DIY. I did actually extend these beds six inches taller than it recommended so that my daughter's closet could fit underneath. Um, I have three toddlers sleeping in here and have a fourth baby coming soon so she'll be in here within the next year probably as well. So originally when I made this camp loft bed I was going to build my son a toddler bed underneath the stairs area um, because his current crib doesn't fit super well over on the side of the bunk bed. I actually couldn't get it to fit originally, but my husband shoved it over there. Um, but the issue is that he still has like a gap a foot wide that he can squeeze out of and cause problems. So um, we may change things up in the future, but for now we just went ahead and put his crib on the end. But ideally I did want to make a floating bed for him floating bed frame for his mattress to go underneath the stairs and put this crib on the other side of the bunk bed but for now this is how it's set up and it's working just fine my one-year-old sleeps in here four-year-old sleeps up here and two-year-old sleeps over there in the crib so I like these loft beds because they have stairs and of course with toddlers they can fall off the ladder more easily. Now because I did extend this six inches you would probably want to add another slat of wood so they can get up and down from the bed more easily. I haven't done that yet just I needed a break from this project. <laughs> because of how long it took. There were just things I didn't consider along the way. Um, so there are some aesthetic things I would change if I did this again. I ended up just screwing the stairs together on the sides there. And I would also not stain as many surfaces. I stained all the surfaces. But I could have avoided doing the inside to save time because no one's going to see him except for my son sleeping in his bed. Um, so things like that could have saved me some time. I thought this project was going to take one week and it ended up taking four weeks, which is fine. And that's just the way it is. The first step in this assembly is you're going to cut all the pieces of wood to the length specified in her plans. Now, keep in mind if you want to add another twin bed underneath to make this a bunk bed situation or like I did to fit something underneath like a dresser then you're going to want to extend the length of this leg all four legs by six inches than what she says on her plans. So keep that in mind. So go ahead and use a miter saw to cut all your pieces and then you're going to want to sand them smooth and consider which way they're going to be facing when you put the bed together so you don't have to spend as much time sanding down surfaces that won't be touched or seen um, just to save yourself some time. And then, and then you're going to go ahead and use a pilot hole drill. You could avoid using a pilot hole drill but I really recommend it. It goes in smoothly and it makes the screws hidden if you use a pilot drill. So you're going to pre-drill all of your pilot holes one and a half inches on the pilot hole drill and then the screws that you use are, will be two and a half inches in length and I will link below the ones that I used and had good success with. They're coated with a brown 
coating so they blend in but also they slide in easily because they're coated. So once you get everything sanded and stained, you want to put a finish on it. I recommend a matte polyurethane finish for something like this. It's completely safe once it's dry. I'll also link to the one that I used below. I also used that same finish on the table that I made, which I'll be sharing with you all in the future how I made that table too. This is only my second wood project, so if you're a beginner, you can totally do it. It's overwhelming if you look at it as a whole, but if you just take it step by step, do one thing at a time, then it just pieces all together. I would recommend um, help putting it together if you have it. So once you get all the pieces individually sealed, you're going to go ahead and start assembling them according to the instructions on AnnaWhite.com. She tells you to put the frame together first and then you add the platform and the stairs. Um, that way it all fits nicely. Now this room is pretty small, but these plans were made to fit in an 8x8 eight eight space. So it's 100 inches long and I should have considered before that I was going to be a half inch too short putting my son's crib at the end of the bed and I didn't so that's why I had the issue with his crib not fitting and I thought I was going to have to make a floating bed frame but my, my husband was able to shove it in there so I didn't have to do that right now. Um, I'll probably do it in the future for aesthetics just because the wood on his crib is a light pine color and it doesn't match the stain that I use which by the way I used a um, special walnut stain and it's kind of a medium walnut color. It makes it really warm feeling in here and I really like it. I also already had the stain from when I did the table so that's why I decided on that stain color. So once you get it all put together I also would recommend if you have wood floors to put some felt pads on the bottom of each piece that's going to be on the floor for two reasons. One, it doesn't scratch up your hardwood floor and two, it makes the bed more easy to maneuver and move around when you're trying to rearrange furniture after putting this together. I also do have plans to paint and panel the room in the future so it will make it easy to slide the bed forward to paint that wall and to the side to paint that wall when I get to that point. So anyways I hope you like these tips and tricks and like this toddler style bed that I put together. Now I do have a couple last finishing touches. I was about two inches too short on my um, stair platform here so I'll need to rip a piece of wood to fill it in but so far none of my kids have fallen through it and it's not too much in the way so I'll probably wait to get around to it until after the holidays so make sure you watch for my video coming up um, I will tell you about how I made my farmhouse rustic table for cheap I love doing everything on a budget we live on a budget Really, if you just have the time to invest in doing it, most people can do it. Also, because we went ahead and just shoved my toddler's bed on the side of this um, bunk bed, it pinned my curtains to the wall. So I'll be sewing them some linen curtains that are just the length of the window. I also would recommend reinforcing this top bunk bed with some metal brackets, um, especially if you have rambunctious toddlers like I do that like to jump around and climb on and off the bed all day, I just bought some simple cheap brackets from Lowe's that I reinforced under here and I have a few more I'll probably add as well just to make it a little more safe and make me feel more comfortable with them with this new setup. I also just wanted to share with you everything that I got in this room. Um, vintage finds that I got super cheap on Facebook Marketplace. I love Facebook Marketplace. I find like everything I own on there for cheap. So this crib was a gift but it was from Facebook Marketplace and I liked it because of the vintage style. I picked up this chair for free on Facebook my Marketplace. I also picked up this dresser for super cheap, like 40 bucks on Facebook Marketplace and it even has um, a floral wallpaper on the inside. Everything's been refinished. Um, and then I also picked up a cute picture I just hung in their room, a vintage painting from a local thrift shop. So support local definitely, but also keep an eye on Facebook Marketplace if you're a lover of vintage finds like I am. I like collecting things. 
and curating a space full of handmade and vintage items. Well, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you never miss a video. I share encouragement on discipleship, family life, wholesome food, natural living, and I'm getting into more DIY. So follow along. Thank you.